Hey y'all, welcome, 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 get in here, get in here, get in here. It's Thursday Night Live, we're about to jump into our Bible studies, Chosen Chick Style. I'm excited, I always am. I love when I get to spend time with you, you, and you. I always get, well, the last few weeks I've been getting excited, and I think I've been forgetting to add people. Oh, having to go back so let me do that right now Wait just one second y'all are popping in and popping in I'm doing something I normally don't do, which I typed in a couple of people's names. Yes. My sis Eula's in the building. Hey, Eula. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We're going to let a few people jump in. But while folks are joining, I just want to say I'm always excited to be able to share with you. This is a place for believers. Okay. It's not exclusive. It's very inclusive. And I always say Chosen Chick is a place for real friends and real compassion. Y'all, we go so much further than bubbles on the screen, little pictures that pop up on your phone. We are real women who have real discussions about the things that are going on in our lives. But most of all, we have to check in and check on what God has said about us because what he has what he has said, we are, we are. What he said, we can have, we can have. And just like that, I see my sis Sarah's in the building. I see my sis Daphne's in the building. Appreciate y'all. Love y'all. Listen, oh, let me do one thing. Let me drop a comment. The comments have been pretty okay lately. Y'all keep praying, keep commenting. I don't know if it's a numbers game or what, but I've dropped my comment to make sure that I'm not the bottleneck holding it up so y'all talk amongst yourself until which time i can see your comments but i'm just so happy to see your faces to feel your love and one thing i know is that the word is true and the word says where two or three are gathered he's going to be in the midst so we are gathering together in a place of grace and love y'all this is a safe space this is a place for empowerment and fulfillment this is a place to celebrate your victories your triumphs but it's also a place to be honest about um your i don't like the word failure because there's no such thing as failure it's just nudging you in another direction but it's also a place to be honest about your challenges to reach out for help to ask for prayers but you can be fully you in this space and i love it like i said this is a place for real friends and real compassion one of my sweeties from C, Lisa, jumped in the building. Chaka, one of my new beginning sisters, have uh, jumped in. Thank y'all so much. Pop in, pop in. Let's do this. What we're about to do is I'm going to jump, um, jump it off. Go ahead and pray. Again, I can't see your comments right now, but don't be discouraged. Chat with your sisters. Engage. Love on each other. And we just believe that the comments will come around as they normally do. Sometimes they don't come around for a while, but... They've been a little better <laughs> the past couple of weeks. So let us pray. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, God, we just thank you. Thank you for this day, this moment, God. Thank you for the breath in our lungs, God. Thank you for the blood in our veins, God. Without you, nothing is possible. But with you, all things are possible, God. And that's good news. Thank you, God, for giving us faith, God. Faith to finish. Finish whatever it is that you have called us to start, Lord God. Faith, God, to walk away from the things that you are telling us are no longer serving us and most of all, no longer serving you, God. Thank you so much. Thank you, Lord God, that we have ears to hear, eyes to see, and hearts to understand, Lord God, that we can do exactly what you've called us to do in this season, that we don't have to rush about anything, Lord God, but we don't have to be stuck or stagnant either, that we can just be in rhythm and step with you. God, that is a beautiful, beautiful place to be so i thank you thank you for my sisters the one that will be able to hear the full lesson the one that'll be 
get in a replay. God, in the ones that pop in, I want you to bless everyone. God, there's room at the table for all of us. There is enough light, Lord God, to shine on us, God, but more importantly, to shine through us. So let our light shine in this dark world, Lord God. Speak to us and through us now, Father. We will hear, we will obey. All flesh come, come under subjection now in the name of Jesus, God. We are silencing the chaos in our minds, Lord God. The voices of the naysayers and doubters, Lord God. The voice that's trying to make us check, check, check something off our to-do list. Lord God, let us be fully present here with you now. Let us hear God, what you're saying in the lesson, in the commentary, in the questions, even in the prayer request, let us connect as a community. God, thank you for blessing this to be a safe place, a place of grace and compassion, Lord God, and a place where your love is reflected in each face, Lord God, in each one of us. In Jesus' name, we pray and we give thanks. Thank you, Lord God. This is going to go all over the world. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. I am so excited. Y'all keep on commenting. Sometimes I think it's honestly a numbers game. So just keep on, keep on, keep on, keep on. And I'm, I pray that I'll be able to see it real soon. For those who may not know, you may have been um, invited by a friend. You may have not ever been in Thursday Night Live per se. You may say, who is this girl with these black frame glasses on? I am Artisha T. Bolden. I am an ordained minister and certified life coach. I am a prayer warrior and I'm a word warrior. I love the word of God. I love to be able to talk to our heavenly father. I love to be able to share with brothers and sisters in Christ what God has said about us because his promises are true. His promises are yes and amen. So that's the ministry side. And I thank God that I am uh, multifaceted. I'm not just one thing. He created me to be many things, but it's all to his glory. I motivate women and entrepreneurs to birth their business book or brand through transformational coaching. I ensure that you are no longer stuck in life, but thriving in success that's aligned with your passion and purpose. I love the work that I get to do. I love the folks that I work with. They're the best folks on the planet. And God has blessed me to do these things. And just like that, the comments are working. Sarah, Sarah gets the gold star tonight. Her comment was the first one that I could see. So we bless, bless God. Sarah is saying that Daphne said something good. Daphne, I had no idea what you said, but I thank God for it. And thank God for you, you, and you. So we're about to jump right in. Exciting. That's right. I'm so excited. Bless the Lord. Oh, my soul. Oh, my goodness. So let me tell y'all something. Just real quick. Just real quick. This is not even a message for the message, but I'm just going to tell y'all. Because right now, I'm working from my Chromebook. Okay. No, Chrome and HP are not paying me. I shouldn't even, you know, but I'm working from this device right here, which is really nothing but a big phone. This is a big fold-up phone with a keyboard. You understand me? This is not a computer. If you're going to buy one for your children, if you're going to buy one for your business, hear me when I say... This is a big phone. This is not a computer. I want to be <laughs> very clear about that. The reason I'm working from this as opposed to my laptop, laptop, Jesus, y'all, I had a whole emotional moment, several emotional moments, because at one point I was locked out of all of my devices except my phone. And what I needed to do, I couldn't do it in my phone. So I'm like, this is crazy because of course I always have this rolling to do list always have a hundred things to do and I said well God I guess you're telling me to be still and so I was literally upset I was emotional this long list facing me and I said okay it's my time to be still and be quiet and so I dug into worship y'all I didn't play any music I turned the phone off I turned the tv off and I turned the worship on and I just got quiet before the Lord and I cried out literally and I just began to write in my journal. And y'all, it was a freeing moment. It had to uplift me because I'm telling you, it was something so simple. But it took me low. I just didn't like. I just kind of felt stuck. I was like, I can't do anything. This is not good. And I don't know what this is going to cost me. I don't know what this is going to mean in repair costs. I don't know what this is going to mean in lost man hours. So I'm thinking all of these things. But I just had to get back to the basics. And the basics is... 
It's not necessarily always about the work that I'm doing, even for God. I had to check myself. Maybe this is the message before the message. I had to check myself. I'm not defined by the work I do, even the work that I do for God. It's just me and him. I am his child. I am his beloved. And he loves me just as I am. When I come before him with no mask, with no costume, just me and him in the purest form. And I say, God. And so I believe that God allowed me to go on this whole emotional roller coaster this whole set of panic just for me to be still and be quiet. And I said, wow. Oh, okay. Me and my sister today, we're talking about whatever happens to us is for the furthering of the gospel. Okay. And so the furthering of the gospel is not just me preaching. It's for the word, hello, to be made true in my life. And so at my purest form, I belong to him. So God literally, for a moment in time, he removed everything else between he and I. He did everything but crack the sky open. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Because I probably would have just melted in the floor. I'm sure I would have peed all over the place. <laughs> Not to be too graphic, but that's like the bladder's going to be gone, y'all. I'm just telling y'all, if it's something sudden and crazy, like the bladder's gone. I don't care what y'all say. It's, it's, it's out of here. But, <laughs> but yes, and that's what I was able to collect myself. Now, still, it was just because my brain is my brain, right? And I was still kind of thinking, okay, Lord, I love you. And I'm going to be obedient because I feel this is the way you shifted me. But I'm still going to have all of this stuff to do. But God ushered me right along. And he caught me up. He made a way and everything was great. And I had to just say, well, thank you. That that was That was really something. Thank you. You ever kind of show out a little bit? And then I, I had posted, did you ever just kind of show out a little bit? And then you step back and be like, I ain't even have to do all that. <laughs> I didn't even have to do all that. So maybe that was the message before the message. But the reason I even started down that path is, yes, Daphne, he absolutely wants our attention. And he will do whatever, whatever it takes to slow us down. We talk about slow down. Later, 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 at the very, very end, somebody remind me if I don't get back to it because that's going to be an announcement for us. So for that, I don't have a full recap for us and I really don't want to move my screen. But I do know that last week we talked about it is so and so it is. Oh, my goodness. Because everything that God is, we are. So we have creative power. We have dominion. We have authority. He was the word and the word was with him. We are the word, y'all. We are the word. We are the gods in the earth. Our life has to reflect our savior. Our life has to reflect the promise on our lives. Come on. And so we are everything that God is. So that's what we went over last week. It is so and, it, and so it is. I might have had a different um, form of recap in my laptop, but I don't have access to my... Um, <laughs> To my notes from last week because I don't email them to myself. I save them and I don't save them in the cloud. That's a whole nother thing. Yada, yada. Boom, bada. So now we're here and I'm excited about this because tonight, 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 we're going to be talking about women in action. Somebody say it with me. Women in action. Since the comments are working, I love it. I need you to get in the comments right now and put women in action. Or you could even put I am a woman in action action either way you want to put it we are women in action women in action let me see what you said Daphne if we only knew what kind of power we have amen women in action. my sweetie Marquita's in the building Kiki's in the building somebody else was floating around and I couldn't see I think that was you Kiki thank you for being here yes women in action one thing about it y'all let me tell you something I'm not, which y'all know this, but I can't stand somebody that's stiff neck, don't want to do nothing. Somebody's just so, you know, cute, so prissy, so whatever, and that they don't do nothing. I don't have no problem with rolling my sleeves up, getting in there and getting stuff done, okay? 
that's just what I, I am a woman of action if something needs to be done let's go i'm that friend you called on like when we was foolish y'all already know if he did something wrong girl called me like we getting ready to go over there do we need to roll up on him and look i wasn't the type i'm not talking about doing something to his car i'm talking about doing something to his face you understand me i wish hazel was in here that's what it is I, i'm that kind of friend and i'm the same way spiritually what's up what's let's get it okay let's pray we going after this no we're not gonna be down in the dumps we're coming out of this we're coming out victorious you understand that women in action that's how we have to be and so i'm getting ready y'all we're a little bit familiar with this story and i love it y'all know i love it so we're gonna talk about our big sisters of faith deborah oh my goodness prophet deborah and jl just a few Verses about these two dynamic women who were not in competition, hello, who were not intimidated by one another, hello, but who just were in place for such a time as this to do what God said. I'm talking about women in action, not too cute, women in action who were just blessed enough to do what God said, just crazy enough just to do what God says, not worrying about what anybody else had to say, not asking for permission from something or someone else, but what they heard, what they sensed, what they knew, they just did it. Oh my goodness. Daphne, what you say? <laughs> Daphne talking about me as a coach. She knows that, yes, it's not about what you want to do. It's about what needs to be done. So it's not about I don't want to move. I don't want to do this. I don't want to think this way. No, it's no such thing. It's no such thing as that. It's time to rock and roll. Then we got to go. So when you don't want to do it, that's I specialize in that. I specialize in that. Let's get it. Okay. So we're getting ready to go. Let me see. I know I don't have everything in exact order. Okay. So we did have a song. Let me share just a couple of lines. So this is so good. Talking about women in action. Women in action. We're talking about women of the word. Hello, which we are. We're not just talking about old ancient times. We're not talking about stories that we pass down from generation to generation. All that's good. All that's important. My sister Lisa's in the building. Hey, Lisa. We talk about women in action. Lisa, you'll appreciate this. Women in action. So, let me share a few lines of this song. Who opens doors that I cannot see? Jesus will. Who will make all my decisions for me? Jesus will. When I'm in trouble, this is good right here. He gives me a song. I know he will. He said he will. He'll fight my battles if I keep still. Yo, he said he will. I know he will. He'll fight my battles if I keep still. Y'all, I done got excited and I'm moving the tree. So y'all don't laugh at me if this tree wind up falling on my head. It's supposed to be stable down there, but I see me rocking and I see the tree <laughs> rocking. So I said this already. We're going to be talking about JL and Deborah. And the key point that I want to make first is JL and Deborah were not in competition with one another. They were not intimidated by one another. They understood the greater good, the nation hello, was at war. Come on. And they did what they were supposed to do. <coughs> Excuse me. Throat done got dry. <coughs> Excuse me. I got the cough drop going. So if we got to get cough drop number two, then we'll just rock like that. Okay. So first let's go to Psalms. I think there was not a song uh, last week. But there's almost always a psalm. So we're going to go to Psalms first. Psalms 139. That's one. That's, that's, I love, I just love the psalms, period. Psalms 139, we're going to look at verse 23 and 24. New living. I think we new living all night, y'all. I think we are new living all night. And God is not a liar, Daphne. We talked about that last week too. God is not a liar. So what he says will be. 
what he says will be. If he says this lipstick is purple, it'll turn purple right before our eyes. You understand? If he said that my hair is green, it'll turn green before I Because what he said is so. It is so and so it is. That's what we talked about last week. My sis Hazel in the building. Hazel, I must have called you up in the spirit. Because I was just saying my girl Hazel needs to be here. So, Psalm 123, right on time. That is the wrong, what I just said. Psalms 139, verse 23. Psalms 139, verse, tw verse 23. 139 verse 23 new living translation here we go search me O god and know my heart test me and know my anxious thoughts point out anything in me that offends you and lead me along the path of everlasting life i know he will he said he will he'll fight my battle if i keep still we're gonna look at the battle right now, so I want to ask you, so this was in a little bit different order, but I'm going to obey the notes because like I said, I don't have access to my full body of everything. I just have this big old phone that they call a Chromebook. Okay. Question. What are you doing when you're not noticed? Hello. What are you doing when you're not noticed? What are you doing in the background? What are you doing in a quiet time? What are you doing in your waiting season, ladies? Okay, especially single ladies. What are you doing when you're not noticed? What are you doing while you're waiting? Could you be question number two? I want you to think about it. Now you can answer. These are rhetorical, but you can answer. Okay, because God is talking to you and me. Could you be your own hindrance? Is the way that you're thinking, the way that you are in relationships, okay, not just romantic, I'm talking about with your children, with the people on your job, with your brothers and sisters, the way you are in relationships, is that a hindrance? The way you talk, is it a hindrance, okay? Are you, I'm getting ahead of myself, but I've got to go ahead on and say it, are you putting on that Christ character every day somebody say okay t what is christ's character christ's character is the fruit of the spirit y'all we always run after and want the gifts of the spirit oh i would love to flow in prophecy like that oh i would love to speak in tongues like that oh i would love to preach like that okay but you nasty <laughs> you 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 are mean you are a gossip okay the fruit of the spirit are love peace joy, faith, goodness, gentleness, kindness, and the, the two that just punch you right in the mouth, long-suffering, ooh, self-control, ooh, we don't like that, we don't like that, the King James says temperance, okay, we don't like that, we don't like, we think it's cute for us to have a short fuse, but my daddy always say, you better learn how to get a long fuse, okay, you can't just pop off like that. You are not a firecracker, Katy Perry. Firework. You are not that. You don't just blow up. You can. Yes, you can sparkle and shine, but you just can't fly off the handle like that. The fruit of the Spirit, that's your Christ character. Okay, we put on all of this stuff. We add all of this stuff. Hello, somebody. We add all of this stuff to enhance our already natural beauty, and we are beautiful. Okay, we are bold we are beautiful. We are wonderful. Each of us. Okay. But we have to put on that Christ character. We have to do it every day. So are you your own hindrance? Could you be? Are you so afraid? Oh my God. Of the shadow. Could you be running towards the light? Because you're so afraid of the shadow. Remember I talked about this. 2020 showed us a lot. Not about the devil. The 2020 showed us a lot about ourselves. It showed us a lot about this country and our crazy government. Oh my goodness. It showed us a lot about this capitalistic society that we live in. Come on somebody. But it showed us a lot about ourselves. Okay. That we don't want to be alone with our thoughts many a time. We don't know who we are really many of times will the real you please stand up i'm trying to find her i can't see her hello somebody okay i'm talking about women in 
action? Are you so afraid of the shadow? That's why you run into the light. Are you afraid that you are not doing the necessary work there, taking the necessary preparations there, listening to what God says? Like I said, taking that quiet time, that worship time, working on yourself, listening to God, not just praying, running down a Santa Claus list to Jesus. Hello, somebody. But listening, okay, prayer is a conversation. When you're on the phone, if you're doing all the talking and nobody not saying nothing, then that's a problem. That's a problem. One of y'all is not getting what they need to get. It's either you, you just talking to a dead wall or the person, they're not fulfilled because they just listening to you ramble. And they really just ready for you to take a break and take a breath and them say, okay, I got to go. Okay. Prayer is a two-way conversation. And so you got to take that time in the shadow, in the quiet for God to say, hey, you know what? You really be acting like a fool on that job. Oh, hey, you know what? You really too hard on the brother. He not going to ask you out no more. Or saying, you know what? You done double punished this kid. They stayed out late one night. You done took their phone, took their computer. Don't let them do nothing. After school, they can't talk to nobody. They can't go nowhere on the weekend. They can't even go to their cousin house. That's one infraction and you done punished them 12 times. Hello, somebody. I'm knocking on everybody door tonight. Everything. Hazel, let me see what you said before it scrolls up. The fruit of the spirit. All right, Hazel, that's good. Hazel said, if you are missing one of the fruit, you don't have the fruit. And I know that's real. And I know that's real. You got to get all nine of them. Hello, somebody. All right. Pull back that curtain, Hazel. You know I want to do the... Uh, I want to do the demonstration so bad behind me, but I don't want my mess to fall off the wall. <laughs> but we got to pull back the curtain. Hello, that's it. That's it. The shadow work. The shadow work. And it's always interesting to me because my pastor will tell you he don't like school and he was so happy that he got out. If somebody asked him where his high school diploma was right now, he don't know. He know his wife got it somewhere. But he said, you know, when 12th grade was finished, he ran. He never want to go back to no school. But I know that he is reading stuff. I know the Lord is speaking to him, but I know the Lord leads him to read stuff. And so he was talking about the work in the shadows. Well, um, the coaching industry, the psychological um, framework, and the counseling industry has deemed shadow work. That's a part of that soul care. That's that ugly stuff. That's about healing tra childhood trauma. That's about talking about when you were in that toxic relationship. What did that do? Did you fully heal from that? Are you putting one person's face on the other this gentleman may be trying to court you but you keep looking at your ex-husband or your ex-man and johnny can't uh get to you like the way he wants to because you keep thinking about uh bobby and you keep waiting for johnny to act just like bobby did but those are two distinct people two separate and distinct situations you can do it same thing on the job your last job, come on, Sarah, your last job was so toxic, your boss was crazy. And so now you had the new job and you all in your boss face, you just waiting for him to jump at you like the last one did because you're not going to never go through that no more. Well, people got to be people at some point. That's right, Hazel. You have to let the baggage go. And so, no, I'm not going to sit over here and tell you just get over it. Y'all know me. Two things I believe in, Jesus and therapy. Hello, somebody. Jesus and therapy. We do both over here. We do both over here. A paid professional. Hello, somebody who can talk me through my mess. Give me some communication tools. Give me some healthy coping mechanisms. Tell me something right now. Tell me something. Come on, somebody. Hello. You have got to be able in order to be a woman of action, you got to do that work in the shadow. You got to get your mind right, money right. Y'all know I'm all about get your mind right, money right. That's how you get ready for war because we are at war and you best believe that. And it's not going to stop. It's not going to stop till you leave from here. You may have a little bit of downtime where the enemy is trying to say, okay, what I'm going to do next. And so you may have a little bit of a quiet time, but then boom, it's coming right back. So we all got to be prepared and always got to be prepared. And that's exactly right. Loosen the shackles because you can't fight when you got yourself handcuffed, handcuffed to the past, handcuffed to some foolishness. Okay. You hiding behind a rock. You can't fight. <laughs> Grandma used to say, God can't use no Christian soldiers. Y'all, 
Lisa, you ever heard that? Yeah, have y'all ever heard that? God can't use no, excuse me, I said it wrong. God can't use no coward soldiers. God can't use no coward soldiers? No. You, you supposed to have a knife in your hand and you doing like this. You can't cut nobody. You got to stand firm and strong. Okay, I'm getting, I'm getting, I'm going off on a tangent. Let me come back. Somebody say come back. Let me come back. So action. What is action? I have a bunch of definitions. I want to share all of them. They're not long. It's just a bunch of them. So. Oh, now this is what my dad said. Let me just say that. <laughs> oh, Lisa. Lisa, your grandmother used to say that. God can't use no coward soldiers. That's straight up. That's for real. My grandma. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's so funny. I was laughing. Because my grandma used to say that. That is hilarious. But this is something dad said when he was teaching us. Popular is exciting. But getting ready is the work. Okay, we're not always excited to do the getting ready part. We're not always excited to work through the past trauma. We're not excited to say, I may be the problem. I may be the hindrance. I may talk too much. I may cuss people out too quick. I may not know when to be quiet. I may assume wrong. I may think wrong first instead of thinking love first. I may be the problem. That's not exciting. But that's the work that you have to do. That's the work you have to do in the shadows in order to get ready. Okay, there's. it's not just the main stage. It's not just the lights, camera, action. You got to get ready. Who do you know comes on stage? Teeth not brushed, hair not combed. Okay, no makeup on, looking crazy, breath smell. And you're like, you wasn't really ready for this, was you, player? No. But we want to be on the main stage, whatever that is in our life, in whatever area of our life. Okay, whether it's ministry, whether it's business, whether it's on the job. Okay, whether it's in your community. Because let us not um, invalidate the work there. That is important work. That is huge and impactful work. Okay, so you don't just show up any kind of way, looking any kind of way. And thinking that someone is going to listen to you, respect you, or help you. Somebody's going to say, I need to get away from this smelly, unkept, I don't know where they come from person. <laughs> right? So we have to be able to do the work. Okay, so back to the definitions of action. Let me just run through these. And then we're going to go to Judges chapter 4. Okay? And we are... I believe, let me not scroll, especially because now I'm on a whole nother device. Jesus. We want to go into Deborah chapter four. Not Deborah. <laughs> Judges chapter four. Somebody just point your hand toward my mind. Come on, mind. Come on, tongue. Because I be thinking one thing, but then my mouth say something else. <laughs> Am I the only one? I, it's funny, but it's really, it's crazy. Because I, after I said, I was like, that's not the right thing. That wasn't what you were supposed to say. Judges chapter four is where we're going in just one second. So action. Actual one definition of action is the process of doing something. Okay, easy enough. To achieve an aim, that means you have a goal, that means you have a target, and boom, you achieve it, you hit it. Action is also a thing done, a thing done or an act. And the specific biblical definitions are this. <laughs> A driving force, a power of force, a deed. Now it also, I love these. I went these back to back. Boom, boom, boom. It all action also means conduct. It means behavior. It means demeanor. See, we're talking about Christ's character. I jumped ahead of myself because that's in a note somewhere. Demeanor, as well as motion, not stuck or stagnant. We only be still when God say be still, okay? We can't let no roots grow up under our feet. We cannot be going backwards. We have to go when God says go. Or if he says be still, that's still an action. Because guess what? In case nobody ever told you, obedience is an action. Obedience is an action. Doing what God says is an action. That's the most important action that you will ever take, okay? So I have a bunch of notes here, but... Let me see. God, you're going to have to bless the scroll because I'm going to try to come back because that's good stuff too. So let's go to Judges chapter 4. And as we go to Judges chapter 4, I want to remind you that you are the total 
package with your beautiful self. Obedience is better than sacrifice. You are the total package with your beautiful self. You can be who you are. You can be your own personality. You can have your own fashion sense, your own style, your own sense of humor. You can be who you are. You do not have to change those things. You just have to use those things. How you are divinely shaped, divinely put together, okay, inside and out. You just have to use that to the glory of God. The total package. But guess what? If you're not operating in your purpose, if you're not moving toward fulfilling your promise, the promise that God spoke when he spoke you into existence. That's right, Hazel, all of that. If you are not all of that then you are missing something if you are missing your purpose that's such an integral part that's such an integral part that's just like a remote control car with no batteries or a remote control car with no remote you can try to zoom it around and that used to be one of my favorite toys as um, a kid and i never got i got one but i never got i wanted like the souped up one that the boys would get my mom would never give me that i don't know why she bought me a bunch of barbie dolls which i loved but I always wanted a remote control car, like a real fast one, real cute one. Anyway, so you might can just plop, plop, plop it around, but you can't let that thing take off and zoom. It's not going to do what it was created to do, which was go fast, make you say wow, excite you, except you have all of the components. You have to have the car, you have to have the antenna, you have to have the remote, you have to have batteries in the remote, and the remote has to have an antenna too. And so, pew, all that. But if any part of that is missing, it won't work. And so then, so there go us. The remote control car with no batteries or no remote or no antenna. And so we sit there and we look cute. And something may move us a little bit. Come on, somebody. And we sit there and we look cute. Something may move us a little bit. But we are not going where we need to go. The people that could see us and get wild by us aren't seeing us because we're missing such an important part we don't have those batteries we don't have that antenna the remote we don't know where the remote is so we just sit there and we just looking and after a while we collect dust after a while no one is paying us attention okay that is no way to know did you see all that eye contact that you got so god just dropped that on us that's fresh from the throne right there fresh from heaven so we thank God. Every one of us is unique. Uniquely made, unmistakably made, okay? Not a mistake. Not a mistake, no matter what. Okay, now, for real. Deborah is in Judges. I was even going to say the book of Deborah. You heard me. I was about to say it. <laughs> Judges chapter 4. Lisa, are you pointing your hand towards the screen? Yes. So I am going, what's my time looking like? Okay. I'm going to read through this and we're just going to say what the Holy Ghost said because I didn't, normally I break up and I just drop the content directly in the notes because y'all know my scroll game is weak and I try not to have to scroll. That's not going to be the case. I'm going to have to do some scrolling. So y'all just pray, but we're going to read through this, okay? Starting at verse one, this is New Living. Come on. After Ehud's death, the Israelites again began to do evil in the Lord's sight. So the Lord turned them over to King Jabin of Hazor, a Canaanite king. The commander of his army was Sisera, who lived in Horosheth Hagoyim. Sisera, who had 900 iron chariots, ruthlessly oppressed the Israelites for 20 years. Then the people of Israel cried out to the Lord for help. So I just want to show you us. Let me show you real quick. So the people of Israel, hard-headed... Hello, somebody. So the Lord had to let life whoop up on their behind. Hello. And then they cried out. Okay. That's very simple as that. That's three verses. That's three points. Boom. You got that right there. Okay. Verse number four. Deborah, the wife of Lapidoth, was a prophet who was judging Israel at the time. She would sit under the palm of Deborah between Ramah and Bethel in the hill country of Ephraim and the Israelites would go to her for judgment. So what we also need to understand is Deborah is the only female ruler of Israel in history, in history, in the written Bible that we accept as the Holy Scriptures. Okay, so... 
the reason why God never, oh my God, I have shared this with us before. God never meant for his people to have a ruler, but they were so unique and they were so set apart that they didn't like it. If that is not us, I don't know what to do. They were so unique and so set apart that they didn't like it. So then they were looking at other countries, looking at other people and they said, well, they got a ruler and they got a ruler and they have a king. God, we need one. God said, no, I didn't want you to have that. They continued to cry out. And God said, okay. So before they were actual kings, hello, somebody, look, even look at your um, Bible, the order that is presented to us. And before they were kings, there were judges. And Deborah, the beautiful prophet, woman of God, was the ruler of the people. So she was appointed by God to literally rule over the nation. And she was a prophet, meaning she heard from God. She was a messenger of God. And so people brought cases and matters to her and she sat under a tree that they named after her and she decided everyone's fate okay so here we go verse six one day she sent for barak son of abinoam who lived in kadesh in the land of naphtali okay she said to him this is what the lord god of israel commands you call out ten thousand warriors from the tribes of naphtali and zebulun at Mount Tabor, and I will call out Sisera, remember that's the um, opposing warrior man, commander of Jabin's army, along with his chariots and warriors to the Kishon River. There I will give you victory. So it wasn't enough, and y'all know I, I taught about this. I taught about this when we were talking about Deborah. Sisera, not Sisera, let me say the right thing, Jesus. Barak, Sisera was the opposing warrior, okay? Barak, Barak was called on from Deborah. So this is the judge, the ruler, the prophet, the woman of God. You already know. She is put in place. She is also your boss, brother, okay? She is over the army. She is over the nation. She says, this is what the Lord is commanding you to do. A, B, and C. Come out like this. And the Lord already spoke that you will have the victory. Hard-headed Barak said, verse 8, I will go, but only if you go with me. So look at us. We got to see each other. We got to see ourselves in every side of the test. Look at us. Scared and hard head. Scared and hard head. He says, not okay. I will do what the Lord said. He said, uh, that man got 900 chariots. Like it's crazy over there. I almost feel like you sending me to my death. I'll go if you go. In other words, he felt like she set him up, which she was. Hello, somebody. The Lord was setting him up for a victory, okay? We way ahead of ourselves, but just like they were singing about Saul, just like they were singing about David, they would have sung about Barak, but Barak said, uh, this feels like a setup. I don't know. You got to come with me, okay? Verse 9, very well, she replied. I will go with you, but you will receive no honor in this venture. Women of action, women of action, women of action, speak the word of God. Hello, somebody. Women of action, speak the word of God. Women of action, speak truth to power. Women of action will call you out and will tell you the results of your foolishness. Women of action, we can still do it in grace and love. Women of action. Women of action. Okay, that's right, Hazel, trying to be like other people. Very well, she replied, verse 9. I will go with you, but you will receive no honor in this venture. The Lord's victory over Sisera will be at the hands of a woman. And y'all know I taught this before. I like it. I got to sit up like this right here. Because we talk about my girl. When we get towards the end, we talk about my girl, the gangster in the story. I can't wait to get to it, Lisa. Listen. The, let me see how she said it. The Lord's victory over Sisera will be at the hands of a woman. Beautiful, blessed hands. Hands that cook the meals. Hands that rub down the man. Hands that love on the kids. Hello, somebody. At the hands of a woman. You're supposed to be a mighty warrior. You will get no honor in this. And so when you read that, if you stop right there, that's why you got to read the whole thing. If you stop right there, you think she's talking about herself. She's like, okay, I'm the queen. Well, 
she wasn't a queen jesus she's the ruler hello i'm the ruler i'm gonna go out there with you you think she's talking about herself she is not talking about herself she's talking about my girl jl we're getting ready to meet her in just one minute if you never heard the story she's talking about my girl jl my girl jl put it down you understand what i'm saying i get excited about it because i like gangster stuff because i'm from the hood and that's how i get down okay so we're gonna get into it in just one minute all right so now we are at i done got excited verse number 10 let me read the last part of nine no, I'm going to read the whole nine because I like that part. Very well, she replied. I will go with you, but you will receive no honor in this venture for the Lord's victory over Sisera will be at the hands of a woman. So Deborah went with Barak to Kadesh. Verse 10. At Kadesh, Barak called together the tribes of Zebulun and Naphtali and 10,000 warriors went up with him. Deborah also went with him. He said, I ain't going to let you go. She said, okay, I'll go. Because I'm going to do what the Lord said. The Lord already called us victory. So I'm not going to worry about it. I'll go right with you. I'm, I'm good. Okay. Deborah also went with him. Verse 11. Now Heber. This is it. This we got to be my girl. Now Heber the Kenite. A descendant of Moses' brother-in-law. Okay. This is Moses' people. All right. Hobab had moved away from the other members of his tribe. We don't know why. But that's okay. Probably to make money. Almost certainly. Anytime somebody moves away. And um. It's not always a bad thing. And usually, can't say 100%, but usually the Bible will highlight if it's a um, um, a skirmish, I'll say. In other words, if it's a family member fight or if somebody got cast out, it wasn't that. It said he moved away. And so when he moved away, only one or two reasons, he moved away to make more money and provide for his family. So either the food, the water was better or the opportunity for his trade was better okay so he moved away from the other members of his tribe and pitched his tent by the oak of zananim near kadesh verse 12 when sisera was told that barak son of abinoam had gone up to mount tabor he called for all 900 all he said bring them all out i'm getting ready to get up in this boy he think he can come against me i'm getting ready to get up in him so he brought out all 900 of his chariots and all of his warriors. And they marched from Hiroshima to Goyim to the Kishon River. Verse 14, then Deborah said to Barak, get ready. This is the day the Lord will give you victory through the hands of a woman. Okay, don't forget that part. This is the day the Lord will give you victory over Sisera for the Lord is marching ahead of you. So Barak led his 10,000 warriors down the slopes of Mount Tabor into battle. When Barak attacked the Lord through Sisera, Sisera, excuse me, and all his chariots and warriors into a panic, he scrambled their mind up. They were scared. They didn't know what to do. So they wasn't going to win. Because when you so scared that you're about to pee on yourself, you're not going to do that. You're not going to do right. Even if you are stronger, even if you got a bigger sword, even if you got 900 iron chariots, when your mind ain't right, hello, you will not have the victory. The Lord threw Sisera and all his chariots and wars into a panic. Cicero leaped down. He he said he can't even like ride and try to. I was gonna say shoot. We don't know if he had arrows or what. He can't cut nobody. He can't fight. He jumped off. He was just like, this is crazy. I gotta get out of here. So he's retreating, 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 retreating. We done lost this one. It's it's a wrap. This ain't what I thought it was gonna be. I am running away. He leaped down from his chariot and escaped on foot. Verse sixteen. Then Barak chased the chariots. The Barak didn't chase Sisera. Okay, God already said no. Then Barak chased the chariots and the enemy army all the way to Herosha Tegoyim, killing all of Sisera's warriors. Killed every last one of them. It says not a single one was left alive. I'm not making this up. You got to read this. That's verse 16. Not one of them, was, not a single one was left alive. Verse 17 It's getting good, okay? Meanwhile, Sisera ran to the tent of JL, my girl, my girl, my girl. Meanwhile, Sisera, he confused. He don't know what to do. It's crazy. Everybody there, like, what is going on? How is it that we have lost this? Because God stepped in. You What you didn't know, when you was trying to be cute, you said, bring them out, bring them out, bring everything out. What you didn't know is God has set it up for the people of God. Come on, y'all. For the women in action. Deborah, JL, who were not in competition with one another, who were not intimidated by one another, but who saw the greater good, who heard God, who sensed God, and who just did what they were supposed to do. Okay? 
Meanwhile, Sisera ran to the tent of Jael, the wife of Heber. See, did you see that? He was in verse, I think, 11. Heber, the Kenite. Because, get this, listen. Heber's family was on friendly terms with King Jabin. See that? See that? See how that was the whole setup? Do you see that God could be doing something through your cousins? God could be doing something through your church family. God could be doing something through your hairdresser. God could be doing something through your favorite Target and Walmart to set you up for a major victory, to set you up to change lives, to set you up to blow up the whole community in a good way. Do you see this? Do you understand you have to be a woman, a woman of action? Ready to roll at any time. Hello, somebody. Okay. Okay. Heber's family was on friendly terms with King Jabin of Hazor, verse 18. Jael went out to meet Sisera and said to him, come into my tent, sir. Come on in. I'm reading y'all got to read. I'm reading it just like I said. Don't be afraid. So he went into her tent and she covered him with a blanket. Pause one second. There is no way in the world. You know you're not in your right mind. I don't give a dang who. You are from over there. I don't care that your family supposedly okay with the king. Nah, but you got to go back. The Lord threw them into a panic. He's not thinking clearly. He don't know what to do. All of his boys dead. He don't know. He don't know. He don't know if any, guess what? I guess I tell you what he didn't do. He didn't stand out there and count. Okay. Is that 900? Okay. I got eight, seven. I got 500 left. Four. I, I promise you he didn't stand out there counting to see who was still living. He said, Oh no, I got to get out of here. He is not in his right mind. He is panicked, okay? He is stressed out. He does not know what to do. He is tripping, okay? And the Lord had JL in place. And so it don't do JL no good to just see. and like, oh, is that him? That's the man. That's the head guy right there. Dang. She can't run. She can't spectate bystander. She had to be a woman of action. She had to do what she was sensing. Okay, so we have to understand, and this is something that dad said, and we have to understand this. Y'all, if God had them to write every single conversation, every single thought for the Bible, the Bible would be 900 million pages long and nobody would ever read it. So God inspired the portion that we get, he gives us highlights from this thing, but we have to understand that these are real people with real thoughts, real issues. They had baby mamas, baby daddies. They had all of that. Okay. They had malls and markets. They had donkeys. They had all of that. So all of the drama that we are going through, minus this stupid stuff with technology, they were going through all that same stuff socially, politically. They were going through all of the same stuff. And y'all know that this does not make sense. Okay. Let me get to the good part. So he went into her tent which does not make a bit of sense. He went into her tent and she covered him with a blanket. <laughs> I love this part. Verse 19 says, please give me some water. He said, I'm thirsty. Oh, are you? So she gave him some milk from a leather bag and covered him again. And so y'all know milk, just like now, milk is something that when you go to sleep, that's supposed to lull you or whatever. And so it's some theologians that believe that it was a uh, milk of the poppy which is literally a sedative medicine that they would give to sick people and it literally makes you sleep. It will be um, our equivalent almost of like a morphine or a Vicodin or whatever. There's no saving grace in that. You can research it. But like I said, some theologians. So I just want us to understand what it really, um, <clears throat> what it really was. Okay. And so come down, gave him milk. And I lost my spot. That's verse 19. Gave him some milk from a leather bag and covered him again. <laughs> so she had laid him down, covered him up. And he under the cover. He like, I'm thirsty. Give me some water, girl. And she like, okay. She break out the milk. And so she give it to him. And child, for how is it that you just came out of war? All your boys is dead. And you said, I'm going to just lay down and take a nap. Once again, y'all, do y'all see how this makes no sense? Do you see how you have to be a woman of action? Because when the Lord serves the enemy up, you understand what I'm saying? And guess what? Let me say, oh, let me take it another place real quick. 
as quiet as it's kept, just like what we saw, her and her husband probably would have been okay because they was friendly with the king, because they wasn't even living in the tribal area of the nation of Israel, they probably could have went and thrown themselves on the mercy of the king and said, hey, listen, our people going crazy. We ain't got nothing against you. Can we come here? Can we be okay? Can we uh, go? And the king probably said, yeah, you know, I know your daddy name. That's fine. You're straight. So she didn't have to participate in this war at all. Do you hear me what I'm saying? She probably would have been fine, but she sensed something. She knew, I'm sure, what the prophet said, and she understood what was at stake. Do you hear me what I'm saying? Do you see yourself in this text? This is a big deal. So she gave him the uh, milk. Come back, because I got excited. I got to calm down just a little bit. Okay. <laughs> Verse 20. Stand at the door to the tent, he told her. If anybody comes and asks you if there's anyone here, say no. 21, but when Sisera fell asleep, there's no way in the world. When Sisera fell asleep from exhaustion, J.L. quietly crept up to him with a hammer and a tent peg in her hand. Then she drove the tent peg through his temple into the ground. So he died. Y'all, I can't do it because I'm going to kick the whole phone over. I'm going to kick this desk over and it's the whole thing going. So I can't do it like daddy did it. But I just want to tell you, if you can imagine, and I'm so mad because I had a really nice prop to show us, but it is in my car and that's not going to do nobody no good for me to try to run out of there right now and get it. But if you can imagine, this is his temple. So we're going to keep, it's just right. You see that? That's enough flesh on there. That's actually probably um, accurate. It might still even be thicker. And this is, if you can imagine, um, Bishop call it a 20 penny nail. Um, modern at Lowe's, they call it a 10 pound spike. Oh my God. A 10 pound spike. And so she didn't just... Once you get it right here, y'all, once you say, Puck, one little hit with the hammer or one little soft hit with the hammer, Puck. So you're going to hit him. You're going to damage him. He already sleep. I don't, somebody was saying, would he have woke up? I don't think he would have woke up because he is completely exhausted, completely stressed out. God done threw him in a panic and now he's getting ready to be bleeding from his brain. So right here, right here was like, ugh, right here was just enough. He dead now. You got him in his brain. Okay. He has to have enough adrenaline to live through and do something to you. No, he's already exhausted. You done already rock about baby them, okay? That's <laughs> that's New Jack City. We talked about that last week. You done already rock about it. But then she said, he said, the word said, she drove it to the ground. That means, boom, she drove that thing all the way and pinned him to the ground, dead. Dead at her feet. Quiet as it's kept. Everybody, y'all, y'all have a match. I don't know if anybody ever watched Game of Thrones or any of these other wartime renaissance type movies or whatever y'all in war something is on fire people are bleeding and dying it's everywhere it's smoke filled it's stank okay you talking about chariots so you got horses okay horses heads is getting cut off okay people are flipping all up overside upside down when you die once again y'all already know i said if something crazy happened i'm just gonna be a puddle in the floor or whatever when people die they lose their faculties so that is urine that is feces that's heads getting cut off that is stuff on fire all of this stuff is going on around her and then her nation the nation of israel that's winning they're like yes oh my god they you know they like celebrating so it's complete chaos outside her tent and she just is quiet and she don't rock about baby this fool sister is dead and she didn't stop right here she didn't go an inch or a half inch. She nailed it all the way, bam, to the ground, out of here. You understand what I'm saying? Gangster, woman of action. And I just want to say again, tell your mama, tell your friend, her and her husband, nine times out of 10, 9.5 times out of 10 would have been all right. I guarantee you, they could have thrown themselves on the mercy of the opposing king and saying, hey, you know, my daddy, we ain't got no static with y'all. We, You see, we wasn't even living over there with them. So we just, we want to be safe. We, you know, we good with y'all. If y'all good with us. 
it would have been fine. But that's not what God said. That's not what the prophet said. You understand what I'm saying? Woman of action. Come on, let me get these last couple of verses. I got excited about that because she nailed the joker to the ground. She nailed the joker to the ground. And so what I will say is that who is your Sisera? Who is that opposing enemy that is fighting you? Is it your thinking? Is it that mask, that facade that you put on every day? That you pretend like you're okay. You pretend like you like your job. You pretend like the relationship that you're in is not toxic. Hello, somebody. You pretend that your family members are not toxic. You are lying to yourself. You have got to nail that thing to the ground. You have got to put a stake through his head. You got to kill that. It needs to lie dead at your feet tonight. Let tonight be the last night that you think about those things that way, that you entertain those things that way, that you let that thing move you that way. That's it. That Cicero, I need to, I need everybody, I need everybody, I need everybody to put it in the comments. Cicero is dead in my life. It's S-I-S-E-R-A, S-I-S-E-R-A. Cicero is dead in my life. Y'all, you got to put the nail through, not just a little bit through, all the way through, bam, dead, dead at your feet. Sisera is dead in my life. Whatever it is, I always talk about this depression, anxiety, guilt, shame, your old reputation, what you've been through, whether you were molested, whether you were raped, whether you had domestic violence, whether you were the domestic violence, okay? Because people act like women don't beat up men. They do. They do. And I was this close to being one okay because i was i didn't play that like you're not gonna talk to me crazy like i will bust you in your face <laughs> okay anybody that has met my mama already know i am hattie's child and i don't play that okay but y'all <laughs> that's that's the old t see that old way of thinking has to die cicero is dead in my life i need you to declare that i need you to know that i need you to take that into your life my sweetie Aaliyah's in the building. Hey, Aaliyah. I don't know if you just got here. I didn't see you earlier, but I'm so happy to see you. Yes. Yes. And it's not a game, y'all. That stuff has to die at your feet. But y'all, this is the war right here. That enemy is our enemy because there's an enemy of your soul. Hello, somebody whispering in your ear telling you that you're not good enough you're not cute enough you're not smart enough nobody wants to hear you go somewhere and sit down you can't start no ministry you can't start no business you can't write no book you ain't got no business doing nothing in the community you can't tell nobody about keeping themselves you used to be a hoe you can't tell no <laughs> you can't tell nobody about um uh speaking the truth because you've always been a liar you know the enemy will tell you this dumb stuff that has to be dead at your feet Cicero is dead in my life. That's it. My boo put a hammer up there. Put a hammer and a nail up there. Straight up. Pam, bam, bam. Dead. That's it. Drive it all the way through. Dead. The voice of a liar. The father of lies. Dead, y'all. Dead. And guess what? Let me just say this. Let me read this and let me just say this. Let me say this before I forget. <laughs> And then I'm going to read the last couple of scriptures. So we out of here. Again, the Holy Spirit highlighted this one portion of this story for us to understand women in action. Women in action. But what I need you all to know, first of all, if you keep reading 1 Kings, 2 Kings, 1 Samuel, 2 Samuel, all of David's life, we understand that the nation of Israel was almost constantly at war. There was always another nation, always another king trying to rise up against. And so Jael got the victory. And that's what we have to understand to be a woman in action, to understand once again that Deborah and Jael were not in competition. They were not intimidated by one another, but they saw the greater good. And it's just like, no, we got to win this. This is it. And God be glorified. But what I want us to understand is Sisera is an enemy, one kind of enemy. But I just named a whole bunch of stuff. And so what I'm saying to you is that you're going to have to nail that joker to the ground 
over and over again. Sometimes you might have to do it every day. If you have crazy thoughts, if you have thoughts of sadness, thoughts of, oh my God, I can't believe I used to be like that. Oh my God, I said something crazy again. You have to nail those thoughts because guess what? God has not changed his mind about you. God still loved you. God still chose you with your crazy blessed self. If God can use me, God can use anybody. Have you read the book? Have you listened to any more than two Bible studies? You know, this was a whole crazy person right here. Okay. And God chose me just as I am. And I am so grateful. I am not worthy at all, except he called me worthy. I can't be chosen except he chose me. Hello. And that's the same for you. So you got to nail that thing as often as it takes. Don't beat yourself up. Don't say I should have been over this by now. Don't say, why do I still miss him? Why do I want to take his calls? Why do I want to call him? Why do I want to ride by the house? Why do I want to talk to his mama and find out how he doing? Guess what? You are not a robot. You are human. You have emotions. It's nothing wrong with your emotions, with your beautiful self. So just like daddy said, you can have your hair, you can have your makeup, and you can still cast out devils, okay? You can have your nails painted, your fine jewelry, and still be a warrior woman. Do you understand? Don't take it. It's not no joke, okay? God did something when he chose you, and he called you royal, so you are a queen. Hello? And you do, you got to nail that thing as often as it takes. The season is over for us beating ourselves up. The season is over for us not seeing value in our voice, not seeing purpose and destiny on our lives, y'all. That season is up. We got to nail this thing and nail it for good. If it tries to raise back up, we know that she rock about baby this fool. We know that Cicero was dead <laughs> and he couldn't get up. He couldn't do anything. Okay. Again, that's just one enemy. If we st That's why the word is so important. We will see that there may be another enemy peering around the corner just to see when you got relaxed, when you started singing too much and enjoying your victory too much, and he's just waiting on the chance to pounce. And so when that one comes, you got to nail that one too. Never forget your hammer and your nail. Hello? Never forget that. Okay, so let me, I'm going to get these last two verses just because God gave them to me. Um, We did the whole chapter four. And so it says this. <laughs> So he died. That's in the 21. 22 says this. When Barak came looking for Sisera, JL went out to meet him. She said, come, I will show you the man you're looking for. So he followed her into the tent and found Sisera lying there dead with a tent peg through his temple. So on that day, Israel saw God defeat Jabin, the Canaanite king. And from that time on, Israel became stronger and stronger against King Jabin until they defeated him. Nope, it says finally destroyed. So they finally destroyed him. Because we have dominion, authority, and power because of the finished work of the cross. I got into my notes real quick. I'm not, because I got some other stuff. I'm not, not even going to go there because we already after eight. Y'all, we do, we have dominion, authority, and power to nail it, to be done, because we are women of action. So we can't stand there with the hammer and the nail shaking in our hand like, because the enemy will see that, and the enemy will come. Y'all ever watch any action movie and just take that right out of your hand? Girl, sit down somewhere. You're going to do that, and then slap you in your face. Sit down. What you going to do with that hammer? <laughs> but we are women of action. We are women of action. And so in some seasons in your life, you will be Deborah. You will speak the word of God. You will stand. You will call others to war. Hello? And God will set you up for the victory. And you speak and you stand and that's it. And oftentimes, God will call you JL. You don't have to be boisterous. You don't have to be manly. You don't have to fight your way into anything. But God will serve the enemy up to you on a platter and all you have to do is be obedient do what he says and nail that joker to the ground right through his head bam done done that's all i got i mean i got more but that's all i'm gonna give y'all that's, <laughs> that's plenty women of action that's what we are and i'm excited 
about it. I'm excited about this season. I'm excited about what God is doing. The enemy can't do nothing with us. He is a defeated foe. He is nervous and shaking in his boots, and we're going to put him to a flight. We're going to nail his head to the ground. Oh, my goodness. Whew. Y'all, all right, y'all got to hurry up and come and put your prayer request because then I'm going to start saying something else. So just put your prayer request. <laughs> just drop your prayer request. If you have a friend, family member, loved one yourself, you put your own name right there in the comments. Put your prayer request in the comments. Listen, if, I should have said this at the beginning, if you couldn't be with us live, <laughs> if you came in late, go back into the group and watch the full lesson and commentary. Drop the comment, hashtag replay, so that I can acknowledge you and engage with you. My girl Rose couldn't be here tonight. She is in classes for a few weeks, and so she has to catch the hashtag replays. Also, if you have a lengthy or confidential prayer request, listen, I believe in praying specifically, and one thing I know about a God, here's my prayer. My prayer has power, so I have no problem. I want to agree with you in prayer, agree with God will for your life. So if you have a specific, confidential, or lengthy prayer request, you can email me that at thehealedgirl at gmail.com. Again, that's thehealedgirl at gmail.com for your um, detailed prayer request. But if you have a quick one, just a couple, like two lines, drop it here. Whew, y'all, I'm excited. I'm out of breath. Lord, have mercy. Mm, mm, mm. God did it. I love this story so much. Y'all, I love it. Y'all know I like gangster stuff. I like when the Lord get a smart mouth and he, <laughs> he be talking junk to people. I love that. And I love gangster stuff. Like, this joker drove a nail through your boy's head. Like, what? That's crazy. I mean, she rocking my baby. I'm like, what can you even say to that? That's good. That's so good. That is so good. Whew. I'm going to just give y'all a few more seconds because I don't went over time. I went about nine minutes over. Oh, yes. I was actually told about that beautiful anniversary gift that my brother and sister got um, for a nice getaway. I didn't know when the getaway was going to get away. So we will definitely keep you and brother reverend in prayer as you all travel enjoy enjoy wish i could be there with you me and mr bolden okay i'm gonna just give y'all a few more seconds i know it's a wi-fi lag slow types like myself just a few more seconds let me take another sip of water i done got myself all worked up i gotta calm down jesus have me a cup of tea before i go to sleep calm this thing down <laughs> oh god All right, okay. Y'all know I try to crack my eyes open before I finish. So if y'all got one, y'all slide in there while I'm praying. Then uh, to God be the glory. Mm, mm, mm. God, we thank you. <laughs> thank you so much, Father. Thank you, Father God, Daddy on high, Heavenly Father. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. The Holy trinity all one and all in me god thank you Whew. thank you for being with us on tonight thank you for being a god of your word god you said where two or three are gathered in your name you will be in our midst god and you do it every time god you show up every time you fire us up you sup with us you commune with us god and we are so grateful we are honored you didn't have to do it, but you did. God, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you for your mercy and your grace, God. Because we have been stuck before. We have been stagnant before. We have been in seasons of doubt and confusion before, God, but no more. God, we have nailed it. We have nailed those things. We have nailed those unclean things. We have nailed those unrighteous things thoughts those dark thoughts god to the ground it lies dead at our feet we step over it it no longer holds us god thank you for this revelation god thank you 
for our season of JL. Thank you, God, for our season of Deborah, God, that we rule, that we have dominion, power, and authority, God. The enemy can't do anything with us, God. Thank you. God, thank you right now for forgiving us of all our sins, the ones we know of as well as the ones we know not of, God. Anything we said, did, or thought that was not pleasing in your sight, God, thank you for forgiving us of our sins, God. Thank you for accepting our repentance and giving us a chance to get it right. We love you so much, God. We thank you. We honor you and we adore you. We lift you up. We bless and magnify your name. Tonight, God, I lift up each and every one of my sisters, God. Those joining me live, those that'll catch the replay, Lord God. Those that some of these sisters are going to go tell the story to. <laughs> thank you, Lord God, for everyone. Lord God, who will stand on the promise of your word. God, thank you for each and every woman in the body of believers, the body of Christ. God, thank you. Thank you for standing up and being a part of that every joint that supply it. God, we don't have to do everything and we don't have to do everybody's part. All we have to do is our part. God, and we perform for an audience of one. So, God, for once and for all, God, we take off the mask. We break down the facade. That same hammer, God, that we use to nail the enemy to the ground in our lives. God, we're going to use that same hammer to break down the wall. God, we're going to tear it down brick by brick. God, because that wall is just going to become a cage for us. And, God, if we build up a wall, God, you can't even penetrate the wall, God. We have to tear the wall down. We have to invite you in behind the scenes, God. So, bless us to not run from the shadow work, God. So busy running into the light, trying to get the attention, God. But we haven't done the work in the shadows. We haven't prepared for the popularity, God. We want to be popular, but we haven't prepared. So, God, help us. Usher us right into that space, God. Whatever it is, whatever we need to let go, whoever we need to let go, Lord God, shift our thinking, shift our mind, God, shift our heart, God, move our furniture around, clear out our storage, do whatever you need to do, God, you have our permission, throw your weight around, God, come in, Lord God, like a demolition team, God, blow it up, knock it down, whatever, God, guide our hands, if you said that we have to be the machine operator for the bulldozer. Not let us knock it all down, God. Wrecking ball. Boom, boom, boom. That's it. No more, God. And we come fully naked, fully transparent to you. All that we are. God, you you created us. You've been with us from the beginning of time. You know every deed, every thought, every life experience we've ever had. High and low, good and bad. Nice and evil. God, you know it. So, God. We cast those cares onto you now. Thank you, God, that you care for us. We don't have to carry weight, weighty burdens around. Whew, we don't have to do it, God. Just thank you so much. Thank you for healing us, delivering us, and setting us free on tonight, God. Didn't our hearts burn, God? Thank you for changing hearts and changing minds on tonight, God. Families are changed, communities, household marriages are changed parents are changed caregivers are changed guardians are changed now and we thank you lord god i thank you for my brother and my sister reverend crosby and his beautiful wife hazel the amazing author my sister <laughs> and my brother thank you lord god for allowing them to get away lord god to love on each other to celebrate each other god to rest and to retreat God, bless them, give them travel and grace. Keep them, Lord God. Just thank you, Lord God. I thank you. I want to pray for everyone right now who is under doctor's care. God, hallelujah. Some people are dealing with chronic illness and diagnoses such as myself, God. Lord, we don't receive that. We know what the paperwork says. We know what the doctor says. But we choose to believe the report of the Lord, God. Hallelujah. Dr. Rembrandt is going through and having procedures, Lord God, we, we still believe you, God. We still believe you, God. Those of us who are seeing therapists, who are seeing counselors, Lord God, we believe you. Thank you, Lord God, for the tools. Thank you for the professionals, God. 
Thank you for putting them in our lives, Lord God. Those of us who are coaches and mentors and ministers, Lord God. Those of us who seek the guidance of cultures, coaches and mentors and ministers, Lord God. Spiritual leaders all over, Lord God. Bless each and every one of us now, Lord God. Keep us all. Keep my brothers and my sisters, Lord God. We thank you so much. Thank you for the homeless and the hungry, God. You blessed us to be able to touch their lives the other day in a special way, in a tangible way, God. And I'm so excited about that, God. Thank you, Lord God, that we continue to make a mark that can't be erased, God. Making impact for good in the lives of people. God, thank you. Thank you for giving us more impact, more influence, God, and more income, God, because ministry costs money. God, so thank you for doing it. Thank you for the ones that you trust us as givers, as sowers, Lord God. Thank you for blessing us with an abundant harvest, God, because you know we're just going to sow it right back. We are going to be a blessing to the people, God. We've proven that you can trust us because we're radically obedient doing what you say, when you say, how you say it, God. So thank you, Lord God. Thank you for connecting us to people resources. Thank you for connecting us to financial resources, Lord God. Thank you for blessing us to be in the right rooms, at the right tables, Lord God. And thank you, God, that we are building and constructing, creating our own tables, our own rooms, God. Because we are people of integrity and we will invite the right people. We will welcome in the right people to make good decisions, to make godly decisions. Thank you for Godfidence, godly confidence thank you for godly counsel godly wisdom thank you for blessing us thank you for blessing us god in our physical bodies healing us setting us free delivering us blessing us thank you for blessing us in our faith family and finances god thank you i want to make sure i didn't miss any prayer requests god just thank you now thank you for a sound mind thank you for giving us the spirit of power love and a sound mind not the spirit of fear but power Love in the sound, my God. I love you on today. Thank you for those of us who are healing mentally, God. Bless, touch, speak a word to our hearts and to our spirits on tonight. We love you. Thank you for sweet rest. Thank you for everyone who will agree with this prayer, doing something special, surprising, and mind-blowing in their lives, God. In Jesus' name, Lord God, I want to lift up wives and mothers. Thank you for doing it, God. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Thank you for all of our spiritual leaders, Father. Thank you for Bishop Hezekiah Presley Jr. Doing something special, marvelous in his life. Thank you for his wife and his whole family. In Jesus' name. God, I love you on today. Thank you for hearing this prayer. It is so and so it is in Jesus' name. Amen and amen and amen. Y'all, I had to pull it back. I was going it like, I, I, ooh, I be. Mean, I'll be going somewhere. <laughs> yes, God. Hallelujah. Mm, mm, mm. Wow. I'm so grateful to y'all. Thank y'all for hanging out with this girl that just loves the Lord. I am so grateful. I am so grateful. I pray, I believe, I know that this is impactful. So I, I really appreciate y'all hanging out because uh, it's going to make a difference. And it's going to show something on the inside is going to show up on the outside. And I thank you for that. Whew, Lord have mercy. So real quick, tomorrow's fun Friday. Make sure you go back in the group, back in the group, back in the group. Hang out all day. We got your um, word of the day. We got your food for thought, your jokes, and we got your games, games, games all day long. And right around lunchtime, oh my goodness, we have your official chick chat. We got another good one coming up tomorrow. We talk about all kinds of issues, relationship issues, financial issues, family issues, and we got a good one coming up tomorrow, so check in right around lunchtime. Listen, it is also Bold Journeys Podcast. Oh my goodness. I love it. I love it. I love it because you, my chosen, I always said I wanted to do something exclusive just for my girl, so you are the only ones who will get that exclusive sneak peek. To Bold Journeys Podcast. We rocking and rolling episode three. Fresh off the press. Now you can catch it everywhere. Look, let me try to be cute. See if I can drop the link. Y'all know I'm going to drop it in my replay anyway. Hold on, but I think I got it right here for you. Bam, there it is. Apple Podcast, fresh. Bam, you the first one with it. Go ahead, listen to that tonight, when, tonight, when. 
tonight. I'm telling you, it's a power pack. It's 10 minutes. Boom. Get in there. Get this. You're like, oh my goodness. You might have to listen to it twice. By all means, do that. I need the rotation. Okay. So do that. Bold Journeys podcast. Nothing but the best in motivation, inspiration, and empowerment information for your life. It's going to bless you. So I think that's all, y'all. Um, I think that's it. I think that's it. I know Daphne is going to want me to remind you about your vision board. Make sure you're doing something every week toward your goal. If you haven't caught the replay of um, Daphne's vision board check-in, it was very, very good. She gave us a great acronym for vision. So check that out, y'all. That was really, really um, good. That is still in the group, so you can catch that on a replay. Just check. You can um, type Daphne's name in, and it should come right up right here in the group. So that's all I got. I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. Have a fantastic weekend. Um, love to all the lovers. Those of you who may still be celebrating your um Valentine's Day. Some of us did it last weekend. Some of us did it early. And some of us going to do it again this weekend. Some of us. <laughs> so we're excited. So um, do that. And y'all, again, it's not just for couples. You can celebrate with your friends and your family. I always make sure that I get my mom and my sister Valentine's because I love them. And I love y'all too. So I'm going to get on up out of here. Y'all have a wonderful night and a wonderful weekend. Make sure to check out the Bold Journeys podcast. And then I will holler back at you real soon. Good night.